With the return of the second season of Invincible, many fans were absolutely confused as the second season picks up with a fight between the Immortal and Mark Grayson in the skies above a burning city. With Immortal getting the better of Invincible before Omni-Man interrupts their duel and quickly puts an end to the Immortal for now. It's here where we see Mark giving a speech to the remaining humans left on the planet, telling them that they may curse him and his father for taking over their world now, but what comes next is Earth being welcomed into the Viltrumite Empire, meaning all of their troubles like sickness and poverty will finally go away. In the streets, we see people crying as one man named Angstrom Levy, fans of those who remain in the only resistance shelter they have left. Eventually, Mark and his father find the final shelter and do battle with the remaining heroes like a twisted version of Adam Eve, who apparently can't heal our own scars, and a version of Robot who Omni-Man says should have never been born. As Mark and his father defeat all of the remaining heroes and start slaughtering the civilians, Angstrom is teleported away by a strange portal, and we learn that this is another universe where Mark joined his father. But what's happening back in our main one? During the events of Invincible's first episode in Season 2, we saw as a man named Angstrom Levy gets sucked out of his universe by a strange portal, and afterwards he ends up in a room filled of other versions of himself from all over the multiverse. As one prime, Angstrom plans to use his collective genius to save the entire multiverse by bridging a gap between all the worlds through him that would allow him to take the best aspects of one world and bring them to another, in an attempt to end all pain and torment. This plan unfolds as Angstrom Prime recruits the Mauler Twins to help him build several machines in different universes that he then hooks himself up to with all of his variants. But Invincible not understanding what's happening here, arrives on the scene and tells him to shut the machine off. This starts a battle between Mark and the Mauler twins that starts to get a little crazy as multiverse Maulers show up and overwhelm Mark pretty easily, but seeing the bloodshed and not being comfortable, Angstrom tries to stand up from the machine to stop the violence, and it instead explodes, destroying every Mauler twin but one, before it's revealed in the post credits that not only did Angstrom survive, but now he's a freak with a massive brain and a revenge mission against Invincible that he intends to fulfill. During a pleasant day where everything is finally going right for Mark Grayson, and also known as Invincible, he sits in Africa with Adam Eve having dinner together with her and his girlfriend Amber when his private phone starts to ring. It's here where he realizes he's getting a call from his mom and answers the phone, only to hear the voice of a man telling him that his mother is in danger and asking him how fast he can get home. From here, Mark speeds home and flies into his house looking for his mother, who he finds beaten as she sits on her bed holding Oliver, with none other than Angstrom Levy sitting on the bed next to her with his arms around her shoulders, saying, welcome home. Mark gets furious seeing his mom like this and tells Angstrom to let her go, while Angstrom explains that Mark made him a freak as Mark reacts saying, oh, you're that guy. This infuriates Angstrom who explains that he was just trying to save the universe as he hits Mark's mom again, drawing blood right in front of him, causing Invincible to fly across the room to try to take this villain down, before Angstrom puts up one of his portals and sends Mark tumbling through the multiverse. First stop on the trip through the multiverse is a world where dinosaurs are the dominant race and they love to feast on humans as a new battle begins. Here, Mark gets chased down by a talking T-Rex and his dinosaur friends who all say they haven't tasted a sapien for years, but they're immediately shocked when Mark starts speaking meaning people really are just the animals of this dimension. This doesn't stop them from trying to eat him with Mark flying around and even knocking one of the T-Rexes out before he's sucked through another multiversal portal. Here he's taken back to his mother's room where Angstrom holds Mark's baby brother Oliver, telling him that his brother is really interesting to him since no matter how many other universes he's been to, he's actually never encountered another Oliver Grayson, which is a mystery for another time. As Angstrom tells Mark that his family will be safe as long as Angstrom is able to take out Mark for what he did to him, but Mark refuses so he's sent into another multiversal portal, but this time instead of crashing into a dinosaur, he crashes right into the back of a fight between a man with strange metal tentacles and a superhero wearing a strange red and blue spider costume as a new story unfolds. After Angstrom Levy tracks down Mark's house and sends him to the Walking Dead universe for a while while he sits her with his mom and brother, Debbie eventually tries to fight back to help her son who's useless against Angstrom's portals, and as she smashes a vase onto his head, the villain gets enraged and starts to attack Mark's mother as little Oliver Grayson cries on the floor. During this process, Angstrom actually breaks Debbie's arm and tells her that all she did was piss him off and doom herself and her baby, but at that moment, as Mark is finishing up a conversation with Batman whose name he jokes about being lazy, a portal opens up in front of him, allowing Mark to fly back into his home universe, and when he does so, he flies back through that portal in a full-blown rage, and that's before he sees what Angstrom did to his mom. When Mark sees Debbie laying there with her arm broken with a black eye and bleeding from her nose, I think that's the point where Mark decides in his heart that it's time to break his one and only rule. This guy dies. Mark screams, what did you do? But as Angstrom tells him to calm down, he reminds Mark that his body hasn't only been rebuilt, it's also been improved. So as a punch lands across Mark's face, he's tossed back into another portal as this epic battle against Mark's nemesis Angstrom Levy nears its end in another universe. Punch after punch she sends Mark flying from portal to portal as they travel through different dimensions, like one where everyone is cyborgs, or another where they need water packs attached to their mouths like in Dune. However, ultimately, Angstrom and Mark end up in a complete wasteland of a planet where Mark tells Angstrom enough, but Angstrom says that he needs to hurry up here so he can get back to Mark's mom and finish her off. This makes Mark go crazy as he screams to not ever threaten his family and knocks Angstrom into the sand, but it's not 
done yet. As Angstrom struggles to get up, Mark lands on top of him and blow after blow, he starts landing punches on Angstrom at full strength in a blind rage until he's too tired to continue and literally stumbles away. At that moment, Mark realizes that his entire body is covered in blood as he looks at his hands and says the famous lines, I thought... I thought you were stronger. And Angstrom Levy lies there motionless with Mark trapped in another dimension. After Mark finally deals with Angstrom Levy by breaking his only rule, he walks endlessly through a wasteland version of Earth in another universe, realizing that he just stranded himself there. As he tries to make himself feel better about what he just did, he comes clean eventually and notes that he wanted to kill Angstrom, but what does that make him? Mark keeps walking and thinks to himself that in the end, Angstrom actually kind of wins their battle because now he'll just starve and never see his family again. But as Mark sits alone on the beach, pretty much resigning himself to his fate, a portal opens up above him and this universe's guardians of the globe come spilling out of it and immediately mark realizes that they're all older and they look pretty bad but they explain to him that in this universe they've been searching for him for 15 years but robot is going to send him back to his original universe and timeline because there's a lot that mark needs to do to save his world and change history to prevent it from becoming like theirs as he's about to leave future adam eve runs up to mark and tells her that she's loved him for a long time but never said anything but she wants him to go back and be with the adam eve of his time to make up for the time that she lost as mark finally gets to go home. Mark Grayson escapes from the Wasteland universe after killing Angstrom Levy in cold blood. However, as he walks away, what he doesn't realize is, despite the fact that Angstrom's head looks like a grape you stepped on in the road, he was actually still barely clinging to life, likely because only part of his brain that goes down to his back was destroyed. And as he uses the last few seconds of his life to open a portal, he reaches his hand through and is pulled in by a trio of highly advanced mechanized humans. These three look really sorry for Angstrom when they find him, so they take the time to heal him up and fix his body with new cyber enhancements. However, as Angstrom begins to heal and starts to developing his plan for the Invincible War, we learn that these saviors don't come without a price. As later on, we learn that they also place control chips inside of Angstrom that they can activate to make him experience ridiculous pain so they can get Angstrom to do what they want. These characters, known as the Technicians, pretty much enable everything that Angstrom does from this point on in the story. However, if he ever wants his revenge against Invincible, he'll have to turn their universe into a utopia where everyone worships them as gods, so our new villain is going to be busy for a while. So let's see what his character profile has to say about him. First off, we learn that his official occupation is listed as criminal mastermind to the U.S. government, and he uses multiple realities as his base of operations. Here we can learn more details on Levy after his incident in the first episode of the season, where in the comics, Angstrom leaves the universe to go and get his body fixed in another universe with better technology. As far as his powers, Angstrom has the ability to control portals to other universes, but the guidebook tells us that this list of universes also includes our actual real-life universe in it, meaning at some point in the TV show, we actually could see Angstrom send Invincible into the real world, which makes me really want to see Steven Yeun in an Invincible costume for some reason. In the guidebook, we also learn that Angstrom's power comes from his secret ability to mine the quantum background energy of the universe with his mind. Speaking of his mind, we saw that thanks to his accident, his mind grew and mutated, with the guidebook revealing that it gained over 80% of its own mass at this moment. And for a more accurate number, we know that Angstrom was 160 pounds before this and puts on 10 more pounds of pure brain weight, making him 170 pounds of pure evil genius. 